Yo! What up? Today, we are going to talk about something special. Something that was unplanned originally. But then, the other day, like a gift from God, we got oh. the new Willy Wonka trailer. Okay? We're just diving in. Uh -oh. we're, we're going in. Uh -oh. Willy Wonka, by the way, Tom, welcome. As always, good to have you here. What's up? So me and Tom again, as you've told if as you can tell if you've listened to one or any of the episodes, me and Tom have known each other quite a bit of time and we've done quite a bit of things together. And one of the first things that we really came together with and really loved together was the 1971 Willy Wonka movie. I mean, Tom, uh, I, I don't think you disagree. Oh, no. There was a lot of nights spent watching that movie, and I think we watched it pretty much a hundred times. <laughs> At Maybe. least. At least. That might be an, under, that might be an underestimation. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. I mean, probably we made right. remixes. We made tributes to Gene Wilder. We were just like, yo, we were so in awe of that movie. And then you're like, 1971? Like, you're just like, holy shit. They didn't even, they were nine years away from the 80s. They were yeah. just starting the 70s, and they made this movie that it's just like, it stood the test of time, even to this day, and nothing ever comes close. I mean, a lot thanks to the late Gene Wilder, but that yeah, was, he, uh, I think yeah, he had a we, lot to do with it, bro. So much to do with <laughs> it. He was I mean. Willy Wonka. He really was. In my eyes, at least, he is Willy Wonka and will always be. I don't know. Always, That's me. forever. And everybody, is, again, you know, you have your favorite. I'm not telling you you should think he's the best, but in my opinion, you know, he he brought something to the character. And, and again, maybe it wasn't so much what uh, Dahl wanted, you know. I know he wasn't really thrilled with the 71 movie. Which I find but, crazy. <laughs> right. But I mean... I, I mean, he must have had another vision. I mean, it wasn't exactly like the book, but yeah. what is? What movie now do they keep honorable to the books exactly? Please. Never. Nothing. Never. They never do. No. There was just some magic about it. You know what the funny thing is, though? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I don't want to mean to interrupt, but like, it, you're saying that Dahl didn't like it. Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl. How do you even say his fucking first name? Roald. Roald. Roald, Roald. Roald Dahl. Rowled doll. That's how I say it. Yeah, yeah, so he didn't like the movie, but Stephen King didn't like The Shining. Right. And he remade it. He actually made them fucking he remade it. Like, what was it? Uh, somewhere in the 2000s, he redid it. And Early you're like, 2000s. how the fuck do you not like The Shining? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, how do you not like The fucking Shining, bro? Jack? Right. Is Kubrick making, make, directing Jack? Like, how the fuck you don't like that fucking movie? That movie yeah. was the creepiest fucking movie ever. It was one of the creepiest <laughs> movies of all time. Right. It's still to this day one of the creepiest movies of all time. And you're like, so you're just like, you're like, man, I, I guess you really just have a vision in your head when you write a book. And you're just like, I want it to look like this. But it's like, how did you look at fucking Gene Wilder and say anything about that was not phenomenal, transcendent, legendary, trailblazing? I mean, you name it. He was absolute freaking, he was a total crackhead in the movie. Gene right. Wilder. He was just I agree. He was hilarious. He was a character. He was charming. He was everything. Well, you know what? Let's go over the he movie a little bit. Let's go over the 71 movie a little bit. We'll, we'll, we'll try our it. best to hold to a little bit. But again, yeah, yeah it's going to be tough. All right. So again, we're not going to tell you the whole synopsis of the movie, but it kind of starts with our friend here, Charlie Bucket going to see this guy who I always thought was kind of a, a you know, a, a jerk <laughs> a little bit, the candy yeah. man. I didn't like him. Even but remember, he was worried about, he was worried about GI issues. He's like, you'll get a stomach ache if you eat right. it like that. But then he had no problem. So he wasn't opening, that much of a dick. But then he opened up that thing and knocked the girl's jaw. <laughs> so you take a photo. Oh yeah, that's know. the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, like, watch your stomach boom 
<laughs> Get out of my way, bitch. I'm getting Get a scrum that will I'm trying to make money, bitch. So it's like... <laughs> <laughs> so I don't exactly. know, I just... And even later on, when he comes back after he gets, um, not after, well, no, when he comes back just now, when he comes back, because here's, he looks through the window originally, and then this is after he gets the quarter in the grate. That's what this picture's from. Yeah. So. Yeah. And he's looking at him like, why is your, like, why is your poor ass in here? He's like, not even looking at him nicely. Yeah. Now he's like, like, you're never in here, you broke motherfucker. I mean, think about it. The other kids were in there. They got songs and dances and free candy. He walks in. He's like, thank you there. Who, oh, the, the, the kid with the black hair? The kid with the black hair and the yellow shirt that's like in every scene because he was like son of the director? Right. Right. Exactly. He's like, a scum, a scum, dimly umptious bar. What's that? <laughs> Exactly. He basically, dude. he murdered. He murdered the name of the candy bar, like like Guts would fucking murder <laughs> somebody's name. Yeah, exactly. More on that later. What's your name, man? Mark uh, Raska Martini. <laughs> exactly. yeah, so I found out that that I found out that little motherfucker with the yellow sweater was actually, I think, son of the director. That's why he was also like when when you know the the. What is it? The freaking teacher stops the class, remember? Yeah, he's the one that like, says it, yes. He's the one that tells everybody that there's tickets, and guess what? You can win all the shit. And, uh, yeah, so that that's why you he got, got all those parts. That was a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, class three dismissed. <laughs> all right, all right, here. So he buys his little chocolate, and he goes around the corner like a psycho and opens it around the corner, right? And what happens? Boom. He gets the golden ticket. So then... He looks like a crackhead he, in an alley. Yeah, he looks like he just... Or like you just gave him a $5. He's going to go buy a thing. Yeah, he's about... <laughs> yeah, he's like, I got to find my spoon and, and a tourniquet. <laughs> but, I mean, fast forward, he goes back and tells, you know, that he's one, got the golden ticket, blah, blah, blah. And the kids get there and stuff. Now... I like, and again, please give your opinion, how they set up, how they show each kid and a little bit about him. You know, I like how oh, they yeah. do that. And it really Big made developed. me not yeah, like yeah. him. Like, even as a kid, I didn't like the kids. Yeah, they all sucked. Right. But then you heard Cheer Up Charlie and you like, you started crying. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, dude, were you the little fat boy? Right, exactly. I was the little fat boy crying with Charlie. The little fat boy. <laughs> hey, Ak Ak, were you the little fat boy? Ak Ak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're man, that's that's the thing. Cheer that Charlie was the downtrodden, broke ass motherfucker. Yep. Couldn't rub two pennies together, but he but, had love, and, that and was he had that. heart. And he was a good guy. And that's what matters. It's not money, man. Win one for the zipper. <laughs> like right, he was so, the, yeah, the underdog, the ultimate underdog. Yeah, exactly. So then, uh, you know, long story short, they meet this guy. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, there he is. There he is. Now, just look at the facial expression here. Like, this is what I mean. He he was almost scary. He kind of was like a mass murderer. He did act. Oh like yeah, that. he totally messed with your head. Absolutely. Absolute then, ball buster. Fuck with your head. Totally. And then here comes a scene from Costco when somebody's given free stuff at the end of one of the aisles. This happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I they always thought that was rushed. stupid. I, I, it's like you already have a million people here. How could you make it run smoother? Oh, I got an idea. Put free food at the end of the aisle. Great. That'll yeah, make everything exactly. move smooth. Well, so, this was before Black Friday, so nobody knew about that shit. Right, exactly. So there was uh, no tramplings. <laughs> no, no, not then. All right, so right. then they get loose on everything and they start going nuts, eating all the candy, you know, because it's free, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, there you got Sam Beauregard over there. Looks like he's trying to crack open a giant jawbreaker. Oh, dude, you know what? I got to put this up for a second. This is classic right here. This happens before they there go. There he is. Yeah. Yeah, that's when he does the somersault. He, 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 the, the first scene that you have this motherfucker in it, he's already fucking with your head pretending he's crippled. And yep. then he makes his stick stick in the ground right. like he's going to fall. And then he does a fight. He's like, exactly. I got you, motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. He's already like, got you, bitches. It's <laughs> like, hey, how do you make a first impression really good? Boom. To little kids. That's why too. we loved him so much. That's right. why we loved him so much. He was a ball-busting asshole like us. Exactly. But deep exactly. down inside, he's a good dude. Right. Right. When push comes to shove, <laughs> he was a good dude. That's all that mattered, dude. He was. You know, he was a good dude until he had to blow uh, the whistle. <laughs> then, ba then bad things would happen. Or bad things just happened, I should say. Yeah, that means, yeah, that, that's the fire alarm. At, uh, that's the at death job. rattle. <laughs> that's the death yeah. rattle of the kid, whoever it was. That's usually a code red in the hospital. It's like, yo, someone's dying, Mo. Right. That's when it's time to say your goodbyes. Get the crash cart. <laughs> oh. But I think one of the most, the, the, the scene that like freaked me out as a kid that was like weird was the, when they went on the boat. The best, the best, most terrifying scene of all time. Yep. Dude, they literally it was a snuff, snuff, film. It was a snuff film. Yeah. It was like a, it was a snuff film for chickens. <laughs> right. <laughs> And eyeballs. Oh yeah, and and millipedes and fucking creepy crawly shit. Yep, yep. And all you see is <sighs> walking with your head, bro. Oh now I am gonna be sick. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That's right. Stop the boat. All right. That's right. Uh, you knew you were in trouble if the whistle sounded, and you knew you were in trouble if you saw these dudes. That was oh, yeah. before the death rattle. When you saw them pop in, you knew some kid was going out. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, that motherfucker gone. Dead Absolutely. man walking. You basically, you're yep. a dead man walking. And then Back, you know dude. you 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 see each of the kids with you know gluttony and and. All like this deadly sins almost. It was. Yeah, you know, like you're, you're waiting kids. for Morgan Freeman to show up. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. I um but here's what you don't think is gonna happen. You don't think that Charlie Bucket <laughs> and Grandpa are gonna be dicks, but then this happens. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking stole a couple beers that made them fly. <laughs> I do it exactly, bro. Exactly. <laughs> you think, nah, man, all the bad people, they're doing it and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you should have got an idea, too, that maybe something was off with Grandpa and Charlie when everybody's being sick I think and scared on the boat. I think Gramps, I think Gramps was an alky. That's what I think. Oh, 100%. That's you why he never got out of bed, but he was perfectly fine to walk. The motherfucker was hung over for like 20 years. You know what? I don't know, to be honest with you. He reminded me of what my Uncle Mike would have been like at his age. Oh, fucking amen, bro. Absolutely. Amen. R.I.P. Uncle Mike. Yep. Yep. Uncle fuck it. This here's to you, Uncle Mike. Cheers, right motherfucker. Here. Right here. To Uncle Mike. Right there. A salud. A sal hey, a salud. Here's to you, Mike. You'll fuck a barium. You fuck an animal. But again, everybody's scared and sick on the boat. But they're smiling, having a great time. You should have known something was up. You should have known. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, it winds up. You know how it ends. He gets the chocolate factory, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So that, um, that was 71. Now, what did you think the first time you saw the trailer for the Depp version, which is the next version. What did I think? Yeah, what did you think of it? Yes. I didn't know what to expect, but the thing is, like, the problem is with Tim Burton movies, or they're very, uh, 
you know, there's certain kind of genre or whatever. And, uh, you know, they, they always have Danny Elfman music, you know, it's always like, bum, 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 bum. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's always the same. Unfortunately, I love Danny Elfman. Though, don't get me wrong, but they always have the same kind of feel. And like, I was like, uh, I hope he doesn't fuck it up, but Johnny Depp's the bull He's the man. So, you know, it's just like, I don't think he'll fuck it up, but you know, I'll take a new spin on it. Why not? You know? And right. it was kind of different. But from the trailer itself, from, from what I remember, the trailer was just like, we were so excited. Remember you, me, Goots, we were all excited to go see it. We were like, oh, my God. I had a lot crazy. of high hopes for that. Very high. Lots of high hopes. And again, I don't think it was bad. I just, but according to what they said, it was more, it was closer to the books. Again, I didn't read the books. So I don't know, and I really should have, but I never read the books. And um, yeah, but they yeah, said the Depp version. Doll, I think he was still alive. I think was he? Yeah, I don't know if he was or not. I can't remember. I can't remember. I remember the Alamo. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah! <laughs> oh man, dude! Speaking of Tim Burton, speaking of Tim Burton, speaking of Tim Burton, man, I don't even know if people realize that was him. That was his no, first. Man. Oh yeah. Was that before Batman, wasn't it? I believe so. Before the Michael Keaton Batman? Probably. I believe so. No, yeah, no. Dude, yeah. Pee Wee was his first movie, dude. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, it had to be. I was in, I was in fucking grade school. It was, dude. I saw Pee Wee when I was in grade school. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was. Yep. All right, so Johnny Depp version. So this is how it starts. So this is Willy Wonka's factory. So, you know, it's you can tell it's Burton right away just by looking at that. You can oh, tell. yeah, yeah. He's known for that. Absolutely. What did you think of Charlie Bucket, the casting, this kid, who is now a doctor in that show, The Good Doctor? He plays like an old Yeah, I know. I, he, still has yeah. The same, he still has the same face, too. He looks the same. Exactly the same. That's so funny. Exactly the same. Yeah. Um, no, I liked him. I thought he was good. I mean, but then again, everyone sounds cooler with a you know, British accent. We're like... You know, uh, or, or I'm sure we could. You know, we could use the money. We could sell. We could sell it ticket. We could use the exactly. money a lot more. And he's like, right. he's like a real humble dude. Still broke as fuck, Charlie. Right. That yeah, definitely. Straight out of I, low cash. Yeah. A little motherfucker named Charlie. That's right. Uh, and then C you know buckets. The <laughs> <laughs> buckets uh, of shit. I hope all you people can follow because we we be throwing stuff like crazy. I don't know if half of you are going to pick up on even a quarter of it, but I hope you do. Um, so you know, as you can see, it's very Burton esque everything for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Which is always cool. I mean, I have no problem with that shit. Right. I no. Like that. No, definitely not. You know, the golden ticket. You know, everything is definitely. Now, what do you think about Grandpa? Uh, I mean, Grandpa. He looked. He looked in a lot worse shape than uh, the original. Yeah, he, he looked like he did. was really. De he looked pretty decrepit. <laughs> I didn't hate him as much. I didn't really. I'm like, man, Grandpa's a jerk in the other one. He was more likable in this one. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Grandpa Joe, though, in the in the first in the seventy one one was like, you know, he was a lot more. He was a lot more uh, fiery, I would say. You know, he was a lot more of a character, whereas this one was a lot more just like he was a real. He looked like a great Grandpa Joe, not Grandpa Joe. He right. just looks so old. And this guy doesn't look like an alcoholic. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> nah, he was uh, he was cool, though. I liked him, though. You know, he yeah, was, yeah. They, they went into him working for Wonka and shit like he worked yeah. in a store. And I, that was pretty cool. Like the, you know, I watched, like I told you, I watched it with my daughter after you and me, we had all gone to see it 
in the theater. Yeah. And, and I remember walking away being like a little let down, but watching it, you know, a couple of times, Harper loved it. And we were watching it like crazy. And I remember just being like, Oh my God, like, this is awesome. Like, this is, this is actually a lot better than I remembered it. And it you know really what? grows on. you. I think they're gonna do a throwback to the depth version by, because you see that he's going to, but we'll get into it, but he opens up his store in the new Wonka one. Imagine yeah. they have Grandpa Joe work there as a younger guy, like a throwback to yeah, the, that'd be dope. this one. Yeah. yeah I think yeah. they will. I think they'll give shout outs to both movies. I really do. Um, will he, will he be opening up a shop next to Fickle Gruber and <laughs> Slugwa? Well, there's no Slugworth, but wasn't Fickle Gruber one of the? I don't know. We'll watch it. I well, we're gonna. He get was another that. one. He yeah. was another one. Yeah. So I think he was. He's in the trailer of the new one. I think. So you know, there they go. Blah blah blah. Some of the things still holds true. They're still all terrible, terrible kids. I mean, you got my TV, which I didn't like. This my TV. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't like him. Yeah, he, he, he was, was a annoying. Douchebag. Yeah, I, I I didn't like him. And, and yeah, he wasn't as cool as the one was weird looking. The original, yeah. Oh, totally. Augustus looked like he should have been in Wonderland with his fucking twin. <laughs> <laughs> Tweedledee or Tweedledum. I think Burton forgot what movie he was on for a minute. Yeah. He looked like Tweedledumber. Yeah, exactly. So, um. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Some of them were like, and then, um. Okay, let, let's talk about Depp. Depp was okay. He definitely yeah, fit he was the very version, you know. Yeah, he was he was very weird. Like his voice was weird, but he, you know, he, I guess he had to make it his own, you know, which is which is all right, you know. Yeah, but it was kind of funny, like when he would have his like crazy like uh, what his, his his flashbacks to his dad. And like that was cool. The dad, what was that? It got a little Lee, deeper right? into that. Yeah, Christopher Lee. It got a little yeah, deeper. Yeah, really into, into that. the psychology and like. Yes. It was like it was like being on Sigmund Freud's couch, dude. Yeah, and like, bro. Getting like, like getting deep into like, you know, his deep seated fears of rejection from his father. Like you dude, know, just like dude. it got real deep into that. <laughs> Yeah, the fruit dude. Like it was like real, like psychological. This movie. It got more into Charlie's backstory, more into his backstory with his dad, right. and that that was that was the parts I liked about it a lot. That, yes, that, I agree. But what I didn't it was like a different spin was the CGI of the of the chocolate factory. That looks like crap to me. Yeah, it com that looks like dog shit. I did not like it whatsoever, dude. And then comes in the second thing I didn't like. <laughs> I did not like it. nothing against the actor at all. Nothing against him as an actor at all. I just did not like this spin on on Oompa Loompas. Again, they took the Oompa Loompa and fucked it up. Right. Again, you can never these days put in the movie what the book says. You'd never be able to do that. So no. it's always going to. But I, I then, what do you think feels more kid like? Rob Roy or whatever his name is <laughs> running around like a thousand <laughs> versions of him, like, um, like the clone troopers or little orange guys with green hair. Yeah. Why would you take away the orange and green? Like that was like, I don't know. Or at least I, you could have taken, you could have taken him and put orange paint on him and dyed his hair, put a green wig on him. Like I didn't get that. Like that was the no, like, look, give look. Him white eyebrows. He's got to have white yeah. eyebrows, bro. Look at little three little Buzz Light years. It's terrible. Yeah, who was this guy? <laughs> <laughs> to like you look at you look at the odd. Like when you saw the Oompa Loompas, I was so psyched. I remember. I think we were all psyched to see the Oompa Loompas. What they were gonna do? Yeah. Because like with CGI and all this, and then they do just a million of the same dude, and you're like, you feel like Pesci in that fucking meme. You're like. What the fuck is this piece of shit? <laughs> exactly. I like, agree. That's what we felt like. Like, I got yeah. shit, bro. Like, we wanted fucking Oompa Loompas, and you give us the same right. dude, and you just copied him a hundred fucking times. Like, come on, bro. Do better, man. Tim Burton, do better, dude. You had one job, dude. Fuck out of here. One job. 
But then at Get least they the also fuck out of here. Look out for the horn swoggle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they put him in the jungle where he found them and all that. And like look at this. Look how yeah. I don't like this either. Look at this. Look at this. What is That's this? Oopa Loopa 300? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it, dude. Yeah. Even this, I don't like the CGI, dude, at all. And, and and the fact... Yeah, CGI takes away the real feel of a movie. Right. And, and the fact that, if you remember, I don't know if you can see it here. Oops. Um, Give me one second, guys. I, uh, I true it. I true it. All right. Um, here. Um, it's not. It wasn't geese. It was squirrels. In the in yeah, the death the version. I, I yeah, it's a squirrel trying to get a nut. Right. <laughs> Basically. What the fuck. And even the my TV part, I didn't really like. No. Yeah, a lot. I mean, a lot of that stuff was was definitely a, they put a different spin on things, and some shit just sucked. Like where you're just like, eh, this is not. It's no. too departed from the original. Um, it doesn't pay homage to the original enough, and you know it's kind of like disrespectful in a way, in some ways. I agree. But I guess they wanted. But that's the thing. They they're trying so hard. They were trying so hard to make their own movie. And distance themselves because they just knew, like, dude, you can't fuck with the gene. Right. <laughs> you can't fuck with the gene, bro. You, you can do work it, out so. all you want, but you'll never outwork the genes. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Um, but what I did like also with the new one was the fact that he actually goes and meets the family. They show him Willy Wonka meeting his Charlie Bucket's family. And actually bringing them to the yeah. factory and stuff. Uh, but I and also the one th I, I didn't like the gla the, the uh, Wonka Vader. It's just it didn't look cool. Yeah, the Wonk the Wonka Vader was weird, but I don't know. But I so was like so was the beginning. So was the beginning part because remember they go to the freaking hospital. He has a hospital made for those. Those freaking uh, puppets that freaking started melting. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like this is the burn hospital for the little guys. That are uh, dancing. Yeah, and I like yeah. uh, let you in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, just forget you saw that. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, and then it's like it was like flying all over the place, but it was so CGI too that you were just like, yeah, it just the fuck is going on. And they were shaving pink sheep. Remember what is like? Yes. Like it's like was it cotton candy? What the fuck was that? Like, you know, like what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Wonka Vader kind of sucked. It, like, yeah, it wasn't it as cool as the original. Me. It didn't work for me. Yeah. All right, so now Tom just saw the full trailer before we jumped on. Tom, I'd like first impressions. <laughs> there we go. Don't. 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 Yeah, this is like uh yeah, the classic Homer Simpson moment where you're just like, you fuck the pooch again, bro. <laughs> it just now, looks I like I don't know. My my first impressions are it looks like a fucking musical and it doesn't look like all that good. The guy is not He's not quirky at all, which is at least you could give Depp and Wilder the um, the 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 commonality of saying that they were quirky because Wonka's got to be real quirky and like, but like a cool quirky, like like super yes. clever, super witty. And this guy just looks like he's just like came out of Harry Potter. Here's the thing: and you're just like Bro. the original Wonka, Gene Wilder. Where did he come from? Gene Wilder came from See No Evil. He came from Stir Crazy. He came from Blazing Saddles. He brought that. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Where did this the guy come? We got, cut up. We, we got Moadib Wonka. Yeah. You know what I mean? No good, man. Yeah, he's coming from, you know, he plays, a, you know, that was a serious role, very serious. And now yeah. he's trying to be like 
whimsical and everything. And it just, I don't know, it doesn't work for me. Yeah, my first impressions are it doesn't look that great. Um, Here he is. The Oompa Loompa, at least they got at least they got the Oompa Loompa right in this time. Right, which we'll get into. Not, which we'll get into. Yeah, my first impression was not good. So basically it starts off the trailer with them um with him, you know, trying to break into becoming a chocolatier. And uh nobody giving him a break. It's that it's that same Hollywood story, you know? I mean it's basically Rocky yeah. the candy. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's rock. It's rock candy. It's rock candy. Yo, when they get a load of me. <laughs> 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 so, uh, he um, he starts off that way. So then, I I'll give him this. Con, um, wardrobe wise, he looks good. Yeah, the wardrobe. I mean, that's not that's not that hard. I mean, you got to be blind to fuck that up. Well, your yeah. costume design. But that we see he has a little box of, you know, just like Wonka did, he's got a little box of uh, ingredients that he makes all his stuff with. Thought yeah. that was okay. Yeah, now, but you know, it, that reminds me of like, that reminds me of like, uh, like he's kind of like going back to his roots Kind of like the second movie did, but not quite. Like, kind of like, you know, they're making him like more doing all this chemistry and shit. Right, right. So then they basically tell him, look, you got to open up a shop to um, um, even have a chance to be anything with the other chocolatiers, which as he's trying to do his thing, of course, you know, he just gets dirty looks from all the chocolatiers. Yeah. Who's that? Fickle Gruber. Fickle Gruber. Then, you know, of course. You know, go ahead, real quick. They never mentioned Fickle Gruber in the 71 movie, though. They, no, only in the it's just Depp Slugworth. Movie. Only Slug Slugworth was in the original. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. And then you um, find out that that wasn't even Slugworth. He works for me. Right. That wasn't even the real one. One day I want to see the real one. So now we get to, you know, he's got to have his Charlie Bucket, of course. He's got to have his sidekick. So, you know, here's where he comes up with the idea, and they're going to work together, of course, to get his store open. So then we get the precursor to the fizzy lifting drink. He had the chocolatiers <laughs> eat this candy, so he would fly. And, of course, as soon as everybody saw that, boom. Yo, can I get some? Right away. <laughs> Then we oh get to the God. disgusting river. <laughs> so there's this chocolate river. You know, I, I, they give um, little nods to the old one. I mean, I didn't need a nod to up, but whatever. And then yeah, that's uh, the first thing I thought. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, but I think it's kind of cool where you really he really gets into his mom. That's a different angle. Because you don't really hear about his parents at all in the in the seventy one, the that one you hear about his yeah. dad. This one they're doing the yeah. mom, and I don't even know which one's in the book, but that's the route they're going. Yeah. And then here's they start to open the original store that he opened, and then we get introduced to Oompa Loompa Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna dig it. I'm gonna see. Here's what I don't. Are they mind. gonna Are they gonna have the oompa? Are they gonna have him picking up a hooker? And maybe it could happen. A little hooker oompa loompa. Didn't he maybe. cheat? Didn't he cheat on Elizabeth Hurley with a hooker? Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. And he got a mugshot with him. Yes, he got I'll, in trouble. I'll tell you, looks. That just that's the classic case of looks ain't elf <laughs> ain't everything. No, no, it is not. No, it is not. So uh, and then they give a nod back to the death rattle whistle, which I thought was cool again. Yeah. And what I thought was funny, and I will leave it at this, is once he hears the whistle, Oompa Loompas have to dance. They can't stop. I thought no, that that's, a, that's a spin that we, yeah, see, that's a spin that we never really put together from the original or even the second one. The depth one because you're like, 
You're right. Once they start, they, they don't stop until the number's over. Right, exactly. So, Although I got to say, the one thing I thought was pretty funny in part two, or not part two, Johnny Depp's one, the Burton Johnny Depp one was when they say, uh, they're like, I don't know, that seemed a bit rehearsed. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, kind yeah, of funny yeah. where they were just yeah. like, yeah, there's no way they did that without rehearsing. <laughs> right, exactly. That was kind of funny. Exactly. I like that part. But listen, once it comes out, it's a ways off. It's like Christmas. Once we see it, we'll definitely throw in our final thoughts on the new Willy yeah. Wonka. But it's going to have, in my eyes at least, it's got a lot of work ahead of it if it's even got a chance of beating 71. Nothing's touching 71 ever. Nothing's better than say Monday one. Monday one. So, all right. So let us know, guys, if you like us to do like more movie stuff or whatever our opinions. I mean, we'll probably do it whether you like it or not. But you know, we That's like to right. hear what the people think. You know. Absolutely. So, all right. I want to start jumping into kind of like my mission statement for me, for the way I train, for my podcast. Uh, when I when I talk about health and fitness, what I hope to teach and put out to people, what I think is going to be the best chance for more people to be healthy, more regular people, kind of what I think. And I'm going to kind of break it down into sections because I want to make sure I, I make my point and I, I don't want our, our podcast to be over an hour. So I think what I want to focus on is – how the health and fitness industry markets itself to people and kind of where we go wrong as uh, fitness people sometimes and even maybe medical professionals too and stuff on how we approach people to be healthier. So that's what I think I want, kind of want to start out with. Um, Tom, you interject at any time if you have something to say. Uh, but... What I think I want to go with first here is just the marketing aspect of it. Um, now, I've loved going to the gym, and you too as well, Tom. You can attest to this. We've liked going to the gym since we were kids. So uh, I'm not oh, really yeah. talking about us even when I'm talking about regular people. I'm, I'm more talking about, like, uh, your mom. Someone who doesn't like working out really doesn't necessarily take the best care of herself. Nutritional wise set in her ways type person. Is that a good assessment? There's that's a whole what, lot of them. That's what, thank you, dude. That's what I'm saying. There's a and whole they're usually, lot of them. And they're usually your mom. <laughs> right. Right. Mm -hmm. So most of the time. And, and, and I don't care how much you try to make boot camps and bodybuilder workouts and CrossFit workouts look fun and fancy. You're never going to sell those people. They're never going to want to do that. I, I 95% of the time, they're not going to want to do that. I mean, sometimes people start to work out, they change their mind. But I would say 95% of people that are like, don't like working out tend to be unhealthy, tend to maybe be a little overweight, whatever it is, in a lot of pain, whatever, any one of those things or all of those things, um, they tend to not like exercising. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, and that's more people. So when everything you're going to hear from me, I want to I get this point out there right now, and I want to get this straight. I'm not here to tell bodybuilders how to be bodybuilders. They know what they're doing. They know how to be bodybuilders. And there's people that are trainers that have bodybuilders that know that and go for it. That You need to do that to be a bodybuilder. That is something you have to do. You have no choice. It's a miserable existence. But oh, if you yeah. want to be a bodybuilder, <laughs> that's what you have to do, period. If you're an athlete, I'm not talking to you either. You have to go 150%. You have to. You have to go through the pain. You have to go through this. It doesn't matter. That is your job. 
And there are people that are good in whatever sport you're in to teach you how to be better at that sport. That's not why I'm here. That's not what I'm here to do. And if you're happy what you do and think you don't need any help, I hope you listen anyway. Maybe you'll learn something new. But I'm not kind of here maybe for you either. What I'm here for is the other 80% of the population that is sick, not working out, in pain, on lots of medication to fix things that they probably don't need it for, and absolutely probably unhappy because of those things, and probably not doing as much as they'd like to because of those things, and maybe making people in their families' lives a little harder because they won't do those things. So I don't care how much you market those other things. Those people are never going to want to do those things. And if they get up the courage to do it, they're not going to stick with it long term. Not, not a good portion of them are not going to do it. They're going to hate it. And that's going to turn them off to it even more, to working out. I'm here to say... And I want your thoughts on this, Tom. I'm here to say that if your goal is to be healthy and to be able to continue doing the things you love, whatever that is, for the rest of your life, I think it's a lot easier than most people think to do that. I don't think you need a membership at a gym. If those are your goals, I don't think you need a membership to a gym. I don't think... You need to work out, quote unquote, work out. I don't think you need to do that. I think to get most people to a baseline, it takes consistency, which I found as a trainer seems to be very hard for people, no matter what it is. Consistency is very hard for people. Again, Tom, what are your thoughts on consistency and if you just want to be healthy and need in a gym? Yeah, the, um, the consistency is always the number one issue with everybody. Um, when you're not consistent, you don't make it a, a way of life or a part of your life, you're easily going to go in the other direction. And as you get older, very fast in the other direction, and it's not good. Next thing you know, you wake up and you don't recognize yourself, or you recognize, or you see, you wake up and you're like in pain everywhere just because of lack of movement, lack of proper movement, lack of, you know, just just activity in your life you know you're just just you know go to work go to sleep go to work go to you know eat sleep repeat you know what i mean like over right. and over on that vicious cycle and then you go down this rabbit hole of you know just depression and then maybe i'm going to take pills that will ruin your gut lining and you're overloading your liver now and it's just like now you're taking and then you're taking tons of anti-inflammatories now like things that you you know what i mean like uh, it's it's just becomes a really vicious cycle that people go down, especially as you get older. Um, and of course, the as long as you and me have been lifting all our lives, injuries are a part of it, and they're That's a big part of of working out and lifting. Or if you're trying to get really strong, the injuries are going to happen. Even stupid stupid things, not even working out. Like there's, I remember guys when we worked on the truck, they used to hurt themselves just picking up something small. It wasn't even something heavy, and just twisting the wrong way. And next thing you know, their backs thrown out. So it's exactly. like. It wasn't, they weren't moving properly. They weren't thinking about moving properly. They just didn't have it, the basics, the rudiments in the front of their brain because without consistency, if you don't do it, it's not, you know, it's not, a, it's not important to you. And that's when you get careless and that's when yes. accidents happen. Yeah. I have this happen. thing up in, in my studio. I have this thing up that says, I'm going to butcher exactly what it says, but it says something along the side, <laughs> along the lines of time is a made up thing. If you say you don't have time for something, it means it's not important to you. Yeah. And I have that up in the gym. 100%. Because, yeah. And that's a big thing, man. That's a big thing. Because one thing social media especially, does. Especially is today. Especially today. People's joints are always blown up by social media. So they'll be like, the whole, whenever somebody, you know, how do you get out of things usually? You know, as a trainer, any trainers out there, if you listen, how, how, what is most of the things you hear? I don't have the money for it, or I don't have the time for it. But then you see on social media, they're doing all kinds of other things and going on vacations, and you're like, wait a minute. Yep. I thought you said you didn't have these things. No, nah, I'm living fabulous. 
Dude, there's another meme. Oh, dude, I die. I, I, I think I might have got rid of it, but I, I kept it for the longest time. It's an airplane, and it's a picture of looking out the window of an airplane, and there's a duck yeah. looking in, like looking right in the plane, <laughs> and it'd be like, I thought you said you had no money. <laughs> <laughs> No way. <laughs> yeah. We got to find that. Yeah, I got to look for it. It's so funny, dude. Maybe That's I can classic. find it and have it pop up. Pop up in the video. But you got to you got to have it. it talk like guts. It would be good yeah, yeah. the duck guts the duck. Where my money? I thought you don't got the money. Yo, I thought you said you ain't got the money. So people um, have money for for the stuff that they prioritize, and when people you don't prioritize something? health and well being. <laughs> no, no, no. But you, you know, just go to a doctor and get a pill, or get some Ozempic. There you go. Everything's okay. Oh, oh yeah. Ozempic. I know, <laughs> dude. Every times I've heard that in commercials, man. It's yeah, terrible. but it's, it's a fucking di It's for diabetics. Yeah, <laughs> it's diabetics a, it's can't get their medication because motherfuckers are too lazy to just like control themselves, like again, or just take and, accountability. And there's my point again. It's because people think it's either zero or a hundred percent. They don't see fifty. Why do no, we have no. to like? They don't see that beginning point. They don't see. Hey, you're here. How do we get you to this next step? What's the minimalist amount that I can give you right now to get you to that next step? Okay, now do that little bit consistent, cons consistently. Do it consistently. Now that little bit. Okay, here's yep. now. Here's a little more. Here's a little more. Right, you see how that's making you feel? Oh, that's making you feel good. Because listen, and and again, trainers know this. People are going to feel better before they look better. So I don't know why Absolutely. people want to sell constantly on hey. We're going to have you look like this someday. When I can make a person feel better, sometimes within a session, depending on who they like, what happened and what they, you know, what the problem is. Because a lot of time, dude, it's not that big of a. It, I wish people understood like pain. As a regular person, you don't know differences. It's just something hurts. So when your knee all of a sudden hurts, you think the worst. Of course. Right away. That's what you think. Oh, absolutely. When a lot of times it's not as bad as you think. Now, not saying that yeah. you maybe didn't hurt hurt it, but the reason for and the reason it's not feeling better is because you're not fixing the root problem. Absolutely. And once you fix the root now, I I'll give a quick example because it just happened two weeks ago. I have a client. He came to me, said he was playing with his dog. He jumped in the air and kind of landed in a split, and he felt his knee go. Oh. And then that was it. His knee was killing him. Damn. Yeah, dude, it, it was bad. It was bad. He said he couldn't even walk. He had to limp up on the other leg up the stairs. If he stood up straight, he couldn't bring his knee even, dude, I wouldn't even say a quarter of the way off the ground. He couldn't get it up without the, his knee starting to hurt. So I'm like, okay, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to shorten this. I'm not going to make it boring. It, it basically, I'm I telling think him, I tore my sack. <laughs> no, you actually did almost. Um, so I did. Yeah, watch last episode. So he, I told him, dude, I guarantee you, your glute isn't firing right. So you weren't moving correctly so when you landed you didn't cushion in the right spots and the lesser of uh the joints went and that's why you hurt it because your knee had to take the brunt of it instead of you having like almost like a shock absorber with your with your ways you know what i mean yeah exactly so but i, I would said, never think that no nobody would nobody would so i said okay no. i want to do this test and again, I, maybe some of you ain't going to know what this is, but I had him do a hip thrust on, on a box I had in, the, uh, in, my, in my gym. And I said, please squeeze your butt cheeks. Go to the top and squeeze your butt cheeks. And tell me if you feel them both. 
And he's like, he's like, dude, I can't feel my left glute, which was the knee that he hurt. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, the right one. It was the right one. What's the right? I can't even remember. And I think it was the left one. I'm, yeah, because I was on the left side kicking it. I kicked his glute to try to make it fire. Like I was. You kicked his ass. ass. I did. I kicked his ease. Because what happens I is your ass. sometimes when somebody punches you or taps you in a muscle, don't you tend to tense it? Of course. So I was I was trying to get some feedback from his glute. So I was just tapping it with my foot. Again, I wouldn't do this to a woman. It was, he was a guy. So I was tapping his, his butt. And it, dude, when I tell you, he said he couldn't feel anything. It felt like a dead like pork chop. It felt like a dead piece of meat. It wasn't even. It wasn't even contracted. It felt nothing. It's crazy. It felt like a piece of brajol. Exactly. That's what it felt like. So, needless to say, I did some crap. Got it firing where he felt it. By the end of the session, he was able to stand against the wall and bring his knee all the way up almost to chest height without knee pain. That's amazing. And he was able to walk fine. So it wasn't 100% gone, but within an hour of doing stuff, it was better. It was better to the point where it just got better from there. So I think he did hurt it a little. He might have overstretched something. He might have slightly tore something. But it would have only gotten worse and or happened again if he didn't get to the root problem. And hence why. People continually are in pain and hurt themselves and go get shots and take painkillers and constantly go to physical therapists and chiropractors and don't understand why they'll feel better for a little bit, but then go right back to feeling like crap. When yeah. chiropractors are great for getting your skeletal system back to alignment and back to the way it can be most efficient. But that's where their stuff kind of ends, in my opinion. Physical yeah, therapists yeah. are amazing to get someone who cannot move to move. They are amazing. But then again, I think at that point, their usefulness is over. That's where I feel personal trainers should fill that void. Of but they definitely once a don't. Once a person's moving, so almost like a triangle. So have the physical therapist here, the chiropractors here, and the personal trainer there. So once you're aligned, you go to the trainer. Once you're moving, you go to the trainer. And that trainer, their job should be to get you moving efficiently, keeping your strength. And then if you're at that balance point, Go wherever you want as the client from there. You know what? This is enough for me. I want to maintain it. Okay. You want to keep working with me to help you maintain it? That's what we'll do. Also, I'd be on retainer like a lawyer. You hurt yourself, you know you can come to me and I'll help you. It's kind of like yep. that too. Or, which has happened with clients before, you get to that baseline point and you decide, I want to try powerlifting. I want to try this. I want to do here. I want to, I want to be able to do a pull-up. I want to be able to do a push-up. Whatever it is, then I feel once you have that grasp and that mind-body connection of your body again, then you go to wherever you want. Then do whatever you want. Again, I have my opinions on as we get older what we should stay away from. But your body, you do what you want with it. Go but I'm saying we're missing that middle part. Trainers aren't doing that middle part. No one's doing that middle part. And I think no. that would alleviate some of the pressure of doctors and, ins and medical insurance and things like that. Because I think people use oh, it absolutely. for stuff they really don't need to. Again, I've had people hurt themselves. Or sure, maybe you take an anti-inflammatory. Maybe you go ahead and do that. You know, maybe you have to get to that point. But I mean, even look at the rice method. Do the rice methods out the window now? You don't put ice on injuries anymore. How long were they teaching Nobody rice? Told, hey, wait, why wasn't I notified? Oh, bro. So 
What they learned is, and it totally makes sense, is when you ice it. Here we go. You slow healing. You motherfucker. So you have to let your body do its shit. When you first injure yourself, obviously, get off the injury. Don't move it for a little bit. It's going to swell up. That is your body trying to get crap out and heal. It's trying to do its stuff. You, you can't so stop the, the body. Is, it, no longer reduces, it no longer reduces swelling or inflammation at all. What does, he, what does cold do? What does blood tend to do with cold? It goes away from it. Yeah. So that's why so would, you're that's stopping why the healing go process. Down. Oh, so yeah, it may course. it may help you feel better. No, but it ain't fixing shit. No. Again, again, which I think my opinion is that's why people do all the different things they do that doesn't work because it's better for up if they think it's helping them up here. When it's not actually doing what they think it's doing. I think a lot of it goes back to that. And it's a shame because there's a lot of people out there. I see busting their butts in the gym and doing stuff. And sometimes I'm like, I, I don't think you're going to ever get the result you think you're going to get. And I think it's going to drive you nuts. I wish we would find yeah. a more balance again, balance place. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I always love, you know, when, you know, people get advice from their friends that go to the gym I mean, we've all done it. We've all done it. You know, you go to the gym, you know everything. You know what I mean? It's always been like that. But now with social media, it's just out of hand where, like, as long as you look good, people think you know what you're talking about. And that's not always the case. A lot of times, really good trainers and, uh, and, and, and people who have problems just like everybody else. That's why I started Realistic Fitness. I'm not perfect. I hate working out sometimes. I don't always like doing it. I don't like training legs, but what I've learned is I have to do certain things for my body or I'm in pain. I don't move right. Absolutely. And I don't feel yep. good. And that's it. And, and then you bring on more injuries. You bring on more injuries through compensation. Exactly, dude. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why I'm trying to put this out there, dude. That's why I, I, I feel that health and fitness the way 90% and I'm not saying I'm the only one doing it. There's other people doing it out there. There's other people that I follow that I think are great. There's other people that are really trying to do that, but there's a lot of people just trying to make a buck and it's a shame, but I can't knock the person for making a buck. You get somebody to buy something from you, go for it, but I don't have to agree with it. And I think a lot of it's BS. And again, if you want to be a bodybuilder, take all those supplements, do all that, that, even though a lot of it's not going to do anything, you know, what's going to do something, but. I mean, we can all be honest about that. You know what's going to do it for you. You know what you're if you're going to be a bodybuilder or do competition or something. You know what you're going to go to at some point for most of you. So don't think it's that stuff. GNC. But, yeah, just GNC, dude. I'm a manager there. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a whole other story. Just, 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 to, just to wet all your whistles out there. Just wet your whistles. Goods was a manager at GNC out here in Arizona. And we'll just leave it at that. I I'll was? Tell some, I'll tell you a little bit about that at some point. Anyway. I was um, a manager? So, yeah. So, let's, that dude, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I call my business realistic. I want to help the people that are not doing anything. I want them to know that with the right information, with the right program, and you happen to be consistent, that's in, that, in the client's, in the person's court. I can I can nurture that, but that's on them. I can't force them. So as long as they bring consistency, a good trainer should take care of everything else. Really, that should be it. But again, that don't look good on on social media, man. You know, no, nope. that don't look that, that that don't look hot. That's hot. That's not slay, bro. That's not slay. <laughs> so slay uh, his dick. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, listen, we're hitting an hour, guys. Listen, I I hope you enjoy this. We're gonna do part two of the fitness stuff next week. I'll get a little more into 
some of the thoughts I have on how to make it simpler. And where I think a lot of it that people are doing is just to make a buck. And again, you want to do it, go ahead. Spend your money on whatever you want. I just think it turns a lot of people off. And I think there's other ways we could do it. But let us know. You know, like, subscribe, share, do all those things. Um, please get the word out. If you like what we're doing, you wouldn't believe how much a comment means to us or a share means to us. Even if you get one more person, maybe that person gets another person. We really like this. We think it's fun. We're open to suggestions. But, Tom, take us out, bro. To quote a great man, I'm all alone just like a pimple. Why can't my life be simple? <laughs> I Peace and love, everybody. It. I could have said it better. I'll see you next time, everybody. Later. Bye.